Hello everybody, uh, this is Terraria on Xbox Live Arcade. I am Edwin, online editor at OXM, and this is Log, staff writer. We've been playing this yesterday, and we're now going to take you through some uh, footage and show you some of the things that are in store. It's usually kind to let the man say hello after you introduce them, Edwin. Well, but I'll let, the man, I was let that one that. ride. <laughs> I had a little intro worked out for you, Log. I mean, you had your own theme music and everything, but you've gone and, you know, soured it all now, so I think we're just going to talk about the game. Yeah, let's get back to the game. Let's put the veil back down on our relationship. Sure. So Terraria is, uh, as you can see, a 2D sort of platform game which has world-building tools which are comparable to Minecraft. So you'll start the game, you'll build your own house, uh, and then you'll run around the world uh, mining things and then turn turning them into other things, as we can see here from the inventory. Would it be fair to say it's the new Minecraft? It would be fair to say that, especially <laughs> because we've kind of already said that on the website. So well, it's, a head, it's an eye-grabbing headline, isn't it? it indeed <laughs> it is. And we, it had better turn out to be the new Minecraft. I mean, I've basically staked my reputation on this now. But um, <laughs> I think it's, you know, it is a fair comparison to make, but it's, it's important to not let the comparison limit it, because there's, as you can see, a lot here that isn't in Minecraft. The weapons are much funkier, much more kind of playful in their kind of use of bits of science fiction and fantasy. Um, and uh, the combat is, while quite simple to start with, I mean, it's just point and click, it, because of those weapons, it becomes quite complicated later on, and particularly once you start playing the game in multiplayer. I mean, I've never played this on PC. Is it, I mean, does it happen to be like a, a platformer? There's, there's an, it looks like there's elements of possibly Spelunky in there as well. Yes. I mean, there, there is definitely a Spelunky feel to it. It's not quite as sort of tailored as Spelunky can be, but um, you do have randomised levels or indeed randomised worlds, and, um, yeah, there is a kind of a similar you know, range of challenges, and you can see that it's quite easy to get hurt and die, although this guy's doing pretty well, I think. Um, I think, uh, I mean, obviously this is quite late in the game you're seeing here, so we've missed out the vital sort of initial ten hours of let's build a hut and fill it with stuff. Um, but uh, I, I think it gives you a, a good taste of you know, why you should endure the first ten hours of building mud huts, because you'll end up with a big helmet and some sort of weird flying ball thing. So the, the procedural generation is quite uh, in-depth, and it seems to, you know, it has basically lots of discrete biomes that it flips between. It's just, yeah, it's just I wondered what, whether the crafting element extends to the world or whether it is just building and making sort of like huts and what. Well, it doesn't have a level editor like Minecraft. It doesn't have a sort of create mode. It's very much, as far as I'm aware, a game that you have to play to customise in that way. Um, so uh, if you were going to build something as elaborate as this, you, you, you would, it would take you a lot of work. You'd have to obviously move into that area and fight everything and, and clean it out. Because I mean, this feels like it's got more traditional levels and sort of life structure. It just seems like it's got a game, a game with an end, whereas Minecraft doesn't, well, isn't, is hardly a game at all. It does have more of a kind of an end game mechanic because of these things, these bosses that you can actually unlock. I mean, essentially there are, I think. Uh, a few dozen, I, I couldn't tell you exactly, but they're, they're, they are, uh, they're unlocked by finding particular items in the world and then using those items in certain ways. So, for instance, there's one where you find a voodoo doll, and if you chuck it into a lava flow, it summons something called a wall of flesh. I think I'm right in saying that. Um, and, it uh, sounds perfectly logical and yes, reasonable. indeed. Well, you know, that's standard voodoo practice, isn't oh, it? Oh, and that's oh. what's actually happening here. Well done. Well, we're about to be proved well, right or wrong. Yes. No. Well, clearly I have some sort of undiscovered spiritual ability to <laughs> see these things in gameplay videos. Um, although no Wall of Flesh, Wall of Flesh has appeared, so maybe I'm completely wrong. But um, yeah, the, working towards those bosses, and from what we've been told, it will take you about, you know, it could take you as much as 10 hours, even if you know what you're doing, is kind of the, you know, the big sort of end game mechanic in Terraria. Um, similar to uh, Minecraft has something called The End, which is itself a boss monster, but which hasn't actually been added to Minecraft Xbox 360 yet. So this one's, this is called Goblin Invasion. So is that, is, is there, there's world events that happen like that, is there, is like you... It's got, yeah, I, I couldn't tell you exactly what causes goblin invasions, but uh, yeah, they are kind of triggered uh, by certain sort of things. I mean, I think well, like at night you get more monsters as a rule, and there are also these things called blood moons, which essentially allow zombies to get inside your house. So it obviously ups the stakes rather a lot at night. Um, now, here you can see another fairly high-level character armed with all sorts of mystical paraphernalia, sorting out a lot of dead people. I mean, what's the punishment for death? Is that 
it's not game over, is it? It depends. It t- depends very much on the mode you've chosen. If it's easy mode, you lit- you just respawn somewhere. I think um, a few hours after the, the time of your death, so that you know, it kind of resets the day-night cycle. Right. Um, if you pick medium mode, I think you drop uh, your items essentially, and so you have to go back and collect them, which is something that Minecraft players will be familiar with. Um, and hard mode, when you die, it's game over. So uh, yeah, choose your modes wisely. Yes. As you mentioned building a house thing. Is that is that the same thing as Minecraft? Or is your first day and your first hour yeah. in the game will be creating a haven so you can survive the first night? That's very much the uh, yeah the initial kind of like rush. You need to have a, a, a backdrop, uh, two walls, a door, a torch, a table, and a chair. You know all the kind of the standard house furnishings uh, before you can call it a house and before it will actually serve as protection against the hideous monsters. Uh, such slime. as this King Slime here. They've got some Dragon Quest references going on there. Yes, and, and it's the same sort of thing of, like, you know, this is very much kind of economical monster design. Let's just make a bigger version of the <laughs> ludicrously simplistic monster we made the first time. Um, the monsters do get a lot more complex. I mean, actually, I don't sure think we'll necessarily see one, but there are unicorns in this world. And what's great is that when you kill them, they dismember. So, uh, you know, it'll... You know, know. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what I've always wanted when I see a unicorn. If you have any uh, particular grudge against unicorns, this is your game. If you think they're a little bit smug, maybe. Yeah. Well, and, and need taking down a peg or two. Yeah. And what better way to do that than with what appear to be shurikens? I, I, I couldn't um, vouch for that. I'm not familiar with the details of the weapon lineup, but you can see that they behave quite similarly to some. Kind of devil may cry weapons almost. It's like a random little touch. I'm going to call them boomer blades. Boomer blades is is much better. I congratulate <laughs> you on your invention. Yeah. If you, if any developer wants me to name their weapons, I'm I'm free. I'm bang up for that. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, everyone needs a, a hobby, I guess. So this guy Skeletron, who that's a good name. I wouldn't change that. Yeah, you can see how uh, you know Skeletron fits his uh, kind of vibe. But uh, you meet him, you, you access him by finding an old man who you may have seen at the start of the video. Um, now, after you beat him, uh, the old man actually turns into an NPC that you can recruit and uh, howls in your house, um, who will then sell you things. Uh, NPC recruiting is kind of quite a big part of the game, as is fighting massive ludicrous bosses, as you can see here. Um, I think this guy is not losing much health, so clearly he's, you know, he can afford to play the long game. Um, and Skeletron seems to be <laughs> getting his thing around a little bit. <laughs> Skeletron's not quite sure where he's at at this point. It seems like m- most of these bosses have a kind of a set of preconditions that aren't easily happened upon. I mean, is the idea that you you accidentally find these things, or is it, there's a lot of community rooting out all the hidden bosses and stuff? Um, I, I mean, Terraria has been out on PC since, I think, 2011, and uh, was famously sort of inaccessible. Uh, in terms of how it's how things were unlocked, so there's a, this huge PC wiki that's been built up largely by fans. Now we're looking at a little bit of uh, menu hotness. These are the new Xbox 360 menus, which are reportedly much, much more user-friendly than the ones on PC. Instead of getting everything in one go, you have actual tabs and you know sexy loadout screens. And I should probably stop using words like sexy, sexy. in reference to you know. And well, achievements, yeah. It's, it's yeah. Got <laughs> sexy, sexy achievements. Sexy achievements, lots of sex. But, um, yeah, and... Uh, Can you have sex in Terraria? History is silent <laughs> on this point. <laughs> Maybe, as you know, must we be. That's one for the update, perhaps. <laughs> you can certainly, obviously, you can invite other people into your game, and you can choose between a cooperative and a competitive um, invite. So, uh, you know, and you can you position, position your sprites erotically. Yes, if you wish to position your sprites erotically, then you are quite at liberty to do so. It's a free country, you know, it's the 21st <laughs> century and all that. <laughs> but I can tell you don't approve, though. Well, you know, I just, I don't know. I, maybe You'll I'm be disappointing, just, Edwin, if you do do that. I'm more fixated on the, the weapons. I mean, the weapons are quite phallic, so you, you can get, you know, little kicks out of them. So yeah. I assume, if, with it being like Minecraft, crafting probably will play a role? Indeed, crafting will be important, as will mining, you'll be surprised to hear. And what better way to mine and or craft than with the aid of a hammer that also thinks it's a power drill? I think you saw it just then. Um, Crafting, um, there's, there's obviously a, a tree for kind of crafting, like, you know, you can complex simple items and then use them to complex more advanced items. So There was that workbench I just saw yeah, there, yeah. A workbench is the kind of, you know, one of the starting things, and that allows you to craft stuff like, uh, oh, actually, 
To be honest, I couldn't tell you. I am not familiar enough with this game, but important things that you will want. But there's, yeah, the parallels, and it's a familiar system so far, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah, yeah, I think you can probably see where it's going. The other thing is that the, the Xbox version has uh, two new kind of like select modes. Um, there's one which is kind of used for combat and just basic mining, where essentially you tilt the stick to point the little reticle at uh, you know, where you, what you want to hit. But then when you're building things, you click the stick again, you, you uh, end up with this kind of much more cursor-like kind of drag-and-drop thing, which is much, you know, much more convenient when you're, you're building houses and uh, yeah, placing items. Is all of this cosmetic, or does a lot of it have any use? I mean, does the fireplace ward off ghouls? I, it it we don't may work. Again, I'm going to have to... We don't know yet. I'm going to have to defer to the uh, PC wiki on this count, but I think there's, yeah, there are uh, elements of the world that are cosmetic. I mean, that... There are statues and things you can put in your world just for the sake of it, which is obviously a, a big part of yeah. the world-building sim, just doing stuff for the sake of it. Hence, giant penis shapes in Minecraft. <laughs> I, I'm not Hence, giant penis shapes. Yes. <laughs> There's your takeaway. There's your uh, back-of-box quote. That's going to be on my gravestone. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so it's got a split screen then. Indeed. Yeah, it has a four-way split screen, actually. Um, and uh, if you want to see the kind of the chaos that the weapons can provide, then obviously getting four other players involved. Oh, look at you, Corn. Yeah. Dismember. Look, watch, Dismember. Watch, it. watch it. And um, oh, it's taken the coward's way out. So unicorns are hostile. Yep. Okay. No sympathetic unicorns in this world. But <laughs> but there you go. Hey. There you go. Can you pick up the individual bits and use them in recipes? Again, possibly one for the update. I, I hope so. <laughs> DLC strategy. Um, yeah, and pixies. There's lots of yeah harm that can be inflicted on you know fairly harmless looking creatures in this game. I mean, there are bunnies, for instance, and they dismember too. Would you believe? It seems like it sounds like only the cute things dismember. Yeah. But like they've got an agenda with cuteness here. Yes. Well, you know, maybe I don't know. It's, yes. I like the um, boots and. Yes, I think is there other things in the sky? I mean, I'm just asking now. Like, can you explore upwards as well as downwards? Well, there is. There is. Uh, I, I think. Yeah. There's. There's quite a, a big space over your head. I mean, there's. There's talk of. Uh, there was talk yesterday of a boss fight in which basically uh, one player flew upwards infinitely using a jetpack, uh, and the others uh, chased after him. Um, shooting arrows and stuff like that and uh, so yeah I don't know I, I don't think the sky is quite as interesting as uh, what you'll find below it's quite hard to I don't know mine through the sky it's not, not a very varied <laughs> element sorry I'm trying to think of a way to make the, the sky interesting for people um, so you can see that uh, when you have two players in play they can go pretty much anywhere in the world um, they want you know there's, there's no sort of like you know arbitrary you must be within 30 metres limit is there any kind of do the enemies scale up to meet your challenge? I'm not, not my borderlands. Sure, I'm not. I think. I mean, it, it's it's kind of uh, it. It doesn't have a stat leveling system in the same way the borderlands does. It has better equipment, but um, you don't. You know, you're not going to end up in a situation where you've got 30 strength and the guy you've invited has one or something. All right, so, so it's just the, it's just the gear you've got that affects yeah. then, really. So theoretically, you could invite a bunch of people to your world and just give them high tech weapons and then say, hey, let's go and you know, chuff up some unicorns. <laughs> chuff up. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm just... You know, I'm oh, boy, oh, boy. Four players. So this is where it's at, clearly, as you can see. Uh, and frame rate seems to hold up pretty well with four players. Uh, I mean, it's not a particularly... Well, it's not challenging, is yeah, it, really? Yeah, so I think I've seen more complicated serial packets than, uh, than this game is visually. But it does and have a certain charm. And it also solves problems that we sometimes get on Minecraft with the lag, watching, waiting for huge chunks of world just to pop in. That's true, yeah. And, she, and, that, and that's, uh, I'm, I haven't found out what happens when you sort of explore the ball, world in full, whether that kind of you know, puts any burdens on the technology. It all seems pretty smooth so far. Yeah, and also, that wouldn't happen in this anyway, what with it being split spring local, but. Yeah, well, I guess so. But you know, you all knew what I meant, yeah. stuff, so don't get pedantic. Well, so you well. said like 10 hours gets you something how, how long is the game before you start finding these rare bosses would it be like 20 hours 30 hours what well 10 hours is what they've said for the kind of the, the well what they call the what I think the guy called an entry level boss you know, the eye of Thulu, um which doesn't look entry level when you meet it let's put it that way and I, don't, I don't think Thulu would 
yeah. sort of appreciate being called entry level. No, I think there may be some sort of terrible metaphysical vengeance that happens on um, engine software for this. <laughs> but um, the uh, yeah, uh, you will meet him within sort of 10 to 15 hours at a rough guess if you don't if you're not looking for him, and if you do, you know, know what you're doing, then you can maybe unearth him in nine to 10 hours. That's the kind of the, the rough average they've given. Um, really? But uh, I wouldn't. I mean, you know, the, the bosses are. Uh, not going away, and of course, once you find the ingredients for a boss, there's no, you know, no rush to uh, trigger him. Although, actually, the bosses beating bosses does change the world in as much as it allows new NPCs to arrive. Um, so, for instance, if you beat, uh, that we men mentioned that old man earlier, if you beat the boss that comes out of his head, that old man will turn into a tailor, uh, I think that's the correct title, who will then supply you with good things. So, yes. Uh, oh yeah. So, so you have to build the bosses, kill them, and then you can make new stuff after that. I know it's oh, kind of you know you destroy what you create, kind of thing. You know, die on your own sword. Deep. So that was Terraria on XBLA. Uh, doesn't have a definite release date just yet, uh, but they are saying spring 2013. So uh, hopefully we will see more of it soon. Thanks Marvel. very much for listening. Thank you very much. <laughs>